was incarcerated for 21 years for a murder I did not commit. When I was in prison, writing saved my life because I knew by writing my voice would be heard somewhere outside of prison. When I wrote, I was free. It's my passion, it's what I believe in. It's what has become me as a human being. My name is Derek Hamilton. I grew up in uh, Bedford-Stuyvesant, Brooklyn. Brooklyn was a real uh, rough place to grow up in in the 80s. And I was a little trouble kid. On January 4th, 1991, I was in New Haven, Connecticut, uh, with my brother and some friends, enjoying a weekend. A young lady I was dating, her dad, her child's father, Nathaniel Cash, was murdered in Brooklyn. Police spoke to Mr. Cash's girlfriend, who told them that she did not see the crime. When I was arrested, I was um, in shock. I just thought that, you know, once the facts came out, that I would be uh, uh, let go. Once the trial began, I had several alibi witnesses who could establish that I was in New Haven, Connecticut, not Brooklyn, when the murder happened. And an eyewitness to the crime who identified the real killers. We had faith that, that the jury would acquit. I was convicted July 17th, 1992. And he sentenced me to 25 years of life. I was in shock, I was in disbelief. It didn't register to maybe a day or two later that, you know, I was convicted and I had to do something about it. I began to go to the law library and read the Constitution and take a writing course to learn the basic fundamentals of writing how to make a motion, how to make an affidavit, how to make a conclusion. I read every criminal procedure law book there was. Communication through writing was all I had, and I had to be effective. It empowered me. Let me know at that point that if you write the appropriate words and get the evidence, that there is justice. I would write everybody, judges, prosecutors, Anybody that would listen and say that I'm innocent, I had to write a motion to set aside the verdict. Writing a persuasive motion is your ability to convince someone to accept your reasoning. And you have to do it in a way that makes them feel that it's the right thing to do. I filed uh, at least 15 motions to vacate judgment. I had evidentiary hearings. And during those hearings, the court admitted that the evidence that I had was true. But I was always sent back to prison. In 2009, on TV, it flashed across the screen that the United States Supreme Court had ordered the evidentiary hearing in Troy Davis' case. The Supreme Court has taken the rare step of ordering a new hearing for Georgia death row prisoner Troy Anthony Davis. me, this is a mandate from the Supreme Court that says that I must be given a hearing on my credible claims of innocence. That procedure issues should not overcome innocence. And it opened the doors for many other guys like me. I wrote and explained to the court that the court should, in fact, follow Davis and grant me a hearing where all of the evidence could be assessed once and for all. Finally, in 2011, I went before the parole board and they looked at all of the evidence. I was coming in with the truth and I was just asking what I was entitled to, nothing else. They said all the evidence in my case established that I was innocent and that New York has no interest in keeping innocent people in prison. December 2011, I walked out of prison, crossed the street to a church and said a prayer and 
and thank God, join my family, and just start living a little bit, you know? It was the most rewarding experience ever. I had to be my own best advocate. Writing open doors that was closed. I mean, just the fact that a simple letter would be able to go outside prison walls, my spirit was free to those letters. Now that I have my liberty and I know how important it is to have an advocate, the calling is bigger than me. There's cases in here, there's guys in here, there's innocent. I felt that it was my duty to stand up for these guys, to assure these guys that they had a voice on the outside. They say 2% of the prison population is innocent. Two million people are in prison, which means that there's about 20,000 innocent people in prison every year. So to me, that's enough to fight for.